This is the day. I'm going to assume that we're starting back here. Also got my schnazzy red E cap. That'll make the boys happy. Someone needs to clean this floor. Anna, you want to get on that? So this package here is supposed to be our dry rate controller, which will control the product coming out of the air cart here, because now we need a different rate controller due to the fact that we are switching to the hydraulic drive back here. So I believe this guy's coming out and that guy's going in. We'll know more, know more when Jesse and Matt get here. Lots of harnesses, boxes, zip ties, good stuff. Spread out across the floor here, this is our nitrogen system for the anhydrous that I hope to pull behind this cart, which we've done before, so the cart is equipped for that, but it adds a lot of complexity and a lot of work, and uh, we're gonna make it happen. That's all, we're, just, we're gonna make it happen. In order to have the wireless blockage sensors connected and everything moving correctly, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need the computer in here, so I've got my RTK monitor here. This is a 2630 Deer monitor. I think we'll need an iPad in here, which they are bringing. And I'll have to put on the satellite globes, both on the tractor and on the implement for the passive implement guidance, which, as Tillage Man Sam has pointed out before, is much different than the passive aggressive implement guidance, which just makes sort of vague suggestions to you as far as what you should be doing. I thought that was very clever. That's not actually a thing, by the way. So these guys all just busted in the door, made themselves at home, and right away told me that I need an updated cap because this one is, uh, it's, got a, it's a hard hat. Tall guys bump their heads a lot. I've got the hoses hooked up on this thing. I'm gonna fire it up, see if I can open the wings. This will be where we figure out how many hoses I hooked up incorrectly, backwards, upside down, inside out. So the answer to how many hoses did I hook up wrong is pretty much just all of them. Like how many did I not hook up wrong? But for right now, it doesn't matter because we're really just working on stuff here. We're not taking it out into the field matter later when we start setting stuff up. Don't we'll worry about it then. I'm trying a new camera again and I bumped some buttons and I had the steady shot off which I th think probably made the video shaky but I think I got it fixed now. Let me know is it fixed? We'll probably know. Becky will know. She edited it. We got a plan. Uh, you got a plan? We got a plan. Yep. Got a tape measure. Well then all you need is a tape measure and a hammer most of the time. To play with too. <laughs> and if you'd weld them together you'd really only need one tool then. Yeah. That's very true. A wise man once told me, always use the right tool for the job. The right tool is always a hammer, and anything can be used as a hammer. What are you doing over here to our machine? Oh yeah, we're removing your mechanical transmissions so we can put our hydraulic drives on. Removing the mechanical transmissions? Yep, so okay. that will help with your variable rating. Um, it'll be a lot faster response time, so your zones can be a lot tighter, because this one will go from zero to 300 pounds in a snap of a finger. Okay. Where this old one, it had to screw this thread up. A lot of times, depending on your speed, you'd be through your zone before it got to the rate you desired. Sure. What he's talking about there is we apply the fertilizer, the potash and the phosphorus, at a variable rate, meaning as we go through the field, the soil's been tested and we've written a prescription so we know what each acre needs. And it changes automatically going across the field according to what the computer's telling it. This manual transmission is a lot slower to adjust. It's got an adjustment screw on it that changes the opening or the speeds of it to allow for more or less fertilizer coming through. The hydraulic rate will change much more quickly because it's got a constant flow. So it'll be able to re react and respond much more quickly than the manual transmission. Did I say that correctly? That'd be correct. Nailed it. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna wow. be the one installing your camera system. Okay, okay. All right, we're gonna put these on. We're gonna put a wide angle in the rear so you can actually see when people come up on you and 
play the song, you know, Beautiful. International Harvester song. <laughs> <laughs> one, the one will be on the outside, on the back side of the cart, but then we'll have one on, in the inside of each tank, just so you can see exactly when that product is, is either bridging, not flowing correctly, or if it's running out, you can actually see it run out to the very last drop. And then your blockage system will actually catch it right when it runs out too, or has a flow issue. So you got two, two checks here of making sure product is flowing. So you're not gonna have this, the worst day ever again. This is gonna be super high tech. That's good. I don't want another video titled The Worst Day Ever. Look Got at that beautiful special piece. special eye candy for you. Is that a musical is, instrument? This is like putting spinners on your car. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like yours were rotted out, but we're gonna be reducing this down a hose size. And, and so, so the reason we're reducing these down one size on the hose is to fit the, the wireless blockage sensors, correct? Yep. I'm sorry, Sam. I know you just put those on like 300 acres ago. Is that grinding to you or is that okay? No, I do have stainless tubing. You do, just, just in case I want to put stainless tubing back on. Remember last time. I do. So these are the hydraulic drive transmissions that are now in place. We just got to plumb the, plumb the hoses to them, but those replace the large green boxes laying over there on the floor. And now you can get rid of that solenoid, is that correct? Yes, so I'm getting rid of it because we don't need it. So that's gone. It serves no purpose. And Jesse over here wants us to drop this entire meter because he wants to make more work, is that right? Well, I am a good salesman sometimes. He's a good salesman. I do see a problem here. You already see the problem or a problem? Uh, potential, potential root cause. Potential root cause. Corrosion. Okay, uh-huh. I don't know how that happened on the fertilizer cart. I don't either. So, if you guys didn't see my last videos with this, I was having problems with these far too right hoses or pipes here. They weren't feeding enough, there wasn't enough air pressure, so the fertilizer was getting hung up in them. So, we're wondering if the great big gasket that runs inside here has rotted out to the point where it's letting air go into places that air shouldn't go. Yep, and when we were out here last, we put a new seal here. So yep. this probably isn't the issue. It's, there's another big seal up here. We call it the funnel element seal. And I remember when we took the other one, the back tank off, it was half eaten away. There was hardly anything there to seal. And we never dropped this last time, so we couldn't see it. And so now we're gonna drop it and, and see it. Create more work. Create more work. You guys all right? This one might twist off. Yeah. Is it, is it See, not acting? Uh, it might, might come. It seems pretty. Something's moving. Is it spinning? I mean, is the nut spinning? Or is it spinning? It's the nut. Oh, good. Yeah. It's a good sign. He throws floor dry in the bottom, too. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard of that. 1900, though. What is that? Who's that? It's just moisture. What do you, you can't see anything yet, right? Well, we got to pull this plate now. Is that correct? What I'm looking for here is, is there any thing that we're seeing, but this looks okay. My concern now is above it. With that much bigger seal. Yeah, the much seal. bigger seal. So now we're going to take the four uh, frame mounting bolts here. Yep. And then two ladder bolts, which are going to be fun. We'll probably have to cut those off, but I can... I need a bigger gun on there. <laughs> that didn't want to go anywhere. What are you doing up there, Jesse? I am putting the earplugs in to prepare for the terrible noises I'm about to make. <laughs> okay. Because we removed the transmissions, you have that crank that you can spin to make sure to spin your meters. Yeah, so for comes calibrating out. and stuff. Now you have a switch box, front tank and rear tank. So switching that will run you hold, the... You hold this up and it'll spin that front meter. Oh, okay. Spin this, hold it and it'll spin the back meter. Oh, that's handy. Yep. Then millennials like me don't have to be <laughs> so hard on our shoulders. <laughs> Even all these came off out here. Well, I'm moving. 
We're not worried about tearing anything in the wood, right? No, but we should get this out of the way. We won't break it. We'll Your way it. or my way? We'll just slip it back. It's just sloppy. Yeah, but if you need the weight, so you I can run it. There's down. your problem. So that's that's definitely the problem there. So it's a guess. We're, we're thinking. It's letting air flow back up into the tank and not pressurizing these tubes the way it needs to. It's definitely not helping. Well, that makes sense because I was pretty frustrated by not being able to find the issue. <laughs> and I didn't really have the um, motivation or the tools to be pulling the entire meter off in the field like this. Right when you want to be going. Right, yeah. In the middle of trying to hurry before the weather comes down. So this is what that seal is supposed to look like right there where the upper edge is completely missing. You want that? It's in there like that. And this steel piece here that's been rotting out. We have the option to throw in a stainless one. It's nice of you guys to have brought that option. Yeah, anytime. You had a feeling. I had a feeling. It's potash. It's petrified potash. Is this How does it get in there? I suppose it's not a tight seal between the tank and the steel, so it it just kind of dribbles down in there and fills up, and then it I sits there. I suppose the dust or the granulars get in there and eventually eats away the seal. Sits there and rots just things fill, away. Fills it in. Out with the old. Getting ready to do surgery. <laughs> Want to help? No, no. <laughs> That's a scary word. I gotta go climb in the tank now. Hey, can I get five cheeseburger or bacon cheeseburger baskets with fries to go, please? Those are 16 foot doors, and these two are 18. That'll fit in there this direction? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess for some reason, I was thinking that had to go from the top. Here's one easy, you didn't. Craig's gonna show me how to run whatever it is we're running. <laughs> hydraulic drive. Your new hydraulic drive. Okay. Just turn the key in? Yep, turn the key. This will be your actual fan speed. Okay. Is 4,500? Yeah, I mean, I run mine at 5,000, but okay. guys tell me it's too fast. It's the same way as far as it's gonna roll it out the bottom and weigh the bag and you put the bag on yep. the scale. Same type of deal that way. Yep. Adam, how are those hoses coming along? They are coming along pretty well. Uh, I've got the splitters halfway through. Um, right now I'm just mounting our next ECU up there. So these are the wireless blockage monitors here. Yep, and, and so the wireless portion of it is really just the communication that it has. So it talks over Wi-Fi. You're still running power and ground back. Uh, but when it was developed, there was the, the company that we developed it with, uh, not ready, I was with a different company at the time. Um, the problem was all the can wires that they had going through. Yes. Good luck troubleshooting can wires. Yeah. Troubleshooting power and ground, super easy. Everybody can do it. Yeah, you're gonna get like a nice distribution here. So you'll see that, hey, my left side's flowing at this, my center's flowing at this, and my, my right side is flowing at something else. Uh, you also get a mass flow number. So when you're running it out of both carts, kind of like what you had problems with this spring, yep. this fall, I mean, uh, you know, one would bridge up or not be flowing out. Right. You'll see that on the monitor now. You'll see, hey, my mass flow number just dropped in half. 
Yeah, and the only oh, way I knew it. that before was because I got out and manually cranked it, and then I just looked on the ground underneath every shank. Or you optically interpolated how much was coming out of the tank. That's right, optically interpolated. So did you bring stainless tubes with? I did. Let's just do it. They're so shiny. They're very shiny. Good. That's what matters. What is he doing? Hey, no, no, I just bought this thing. Are you, are you cutting the dope with Joe Mom? I'm cutting the dope yeah, he's, he's grinding on the receiver. What are you doing in here? Doing an informational video. An informational in video? Installation video. Installational informational yeah. videos? You want to be in it? I'm not, a, not comfortable on camera. No. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. You almost broke my lens. That guy's weird. We are looking amazing. Look at that. This is definitely going to improve your morale. Ooh. That's a meeting of the minds right there. <laughs> what a snack. Okay. So, well, this blockage monitor app is downloading onto the iPad. I'm gonna walk us through what we've got going on so far. For the most part, things are wrapping up here. They're setting some stuff up in the cab before we get the iPad in there. I'm gonna head to the back and check things out. So we've got a camera from Dakota Micro. It's a backup camera. Um, we're still waiting on a little piece for the mount, but we've got the wires run here so that I'll be able to see what's behind this train. Down inside here and up there is the camera that will look down and I'll be able to see the product, make sure it's flowing nicely. We've got a camera in each tank. So we've got three Dakota Micro Ag cams set up on this thing. And I'll have full visualization of everything I need. Now, if I can get down without spilling myself, we'll go through what's down here. So down here we've got the hydraulic drive motors. We went over that, it's a much simpler system. Those are the old motors laying over there on the floor. So we've taken those off, we've cleaned this all up. We've run the hydraulic plumbing here that we need. Um, we also went with where I put in some stainless steel tubes here. Uh, the old green ones, they were doing fine, but eventually they rot out and I didn't want to deal with it later. Just uh, fix it correctly now, because they are 10, 12 years old. The next big thing was this plate and the the uh, spacer up inside there, the gasket up inside there, the funnel coming down in the bottom. So this is stainless now and we've got a new gasket up in there. That was my problem last fall. We've got automatic switches here so I can run the meters to calibrate and test them. We've got a new dry rate controller here. And in the back, we've got these wireless blockage monitors that are gonna show us the pounds of, of product coming through and I'll be able to watch that. We've got stainless Ys now so that we don't have the old steel Ys. Um, we, we had to go down on size anyway so we needed to put new Ys anyway so may as well go stainless. So we've got a little bit smaller hose here which isn't gonna be a problem for the amount of material that I've got going through. I've still got to mount the nitrogen system for the anhydrous for our nitrogen application. So I've got the super cooler on the floor over there that I will mount later on. We're going to have to mount the uh, tower here with all the hoses, the rate controllers on there. It's all plugged in for now, so it's communicating, but physically we still need to mount that, which we won't do tonight. We'll do that another time. I don't know what these guys are doing over here. Oh, I'm gonna quit listening to you pretty soon. <laughs> right now, if you climb in your tractor, it says the back meter is spinning at 42 RPM. Okay, and it's not. I'm looking at it and it's not. Right. So I had that sensor on the front tank and it said it was spinning at 50 RPM. So it's the sensor. Yeah. Luckily, we've been storing an extra sensor there. <laughs> That's the actually the reason I switched over to the hydraulic drive was so we'd have an extra sensor. Part number is same. Same part. Let's give it a try. Which one's the bad one? That one there. Hey, hey, you okay? You all right, buddy? You all right, buddy? Let's give it a test here. What's running? Well, the key's on. Uh, this one was running at like 50 to 60 acting like it's running even though it's static or not moving. 
And so I think you're going to want to view it in row view okay. because that's kind of the way, you know, your whole system is set up. You don't have you don't have towers whereas, you know, a lot of guys will have eight towers across their whole thing. So you're going right. to want to set it up I think in row view. Okay. One, two, and three hooked up. Yep. So one, two, and three are all right. Ports one, two, and three. So like this is your farthest to the left one. And this one hooked right up into port one. Yep. So that's all right. Yep. Okay. But port four is not right. Because it's actually We actually up. have port 12. Okay. So. So these boxes, so the viewers know, these boxes are actually sending their own Wi-Fi signal to the iPad so that I can see what's coming through these hoses. Right, so what I did here. That's gonna be sweet, really sweet. The sensors will actually pick up a certain amount of the fan noise because the sensors are actually stethoscopes. So they'll pick up some fan noise, give us a reading on here to let us know kind of where the, uh, where the fan is running in the system, make sure everything looks good. This is the diverter valve here so that we can run the hydraulic oil, run the oil through not the fan. So we can divert around the fan and the valve is stuck, so I'm gonna try to move it. Probably break it and we'll need a new <laughs> valve. Oh, oh, I never had any doubt. I knew that thing would move. That's the WD-40. It's the WD-40, <laughs> yep. How, how it do we get up. it up? Hit it from the bottom and we'll work it a few times. Oh, you can tap it right here. Oh, okay. Never doubted it. Okay. But engage the hydraulics. Engage the hydraulic for the fan. Yes. I believe that's number one. So we got an issue with power to the control box right now and a little leak. She peed on the floor just a little bit. We've all peed on the floor a little bit before, it's no big deal. Just testing the solenoid? Yeah, it's, it's not spinning, it's supposed to be. But it's, but it's got power to the solenoid. I feel like it's got yeah, up. it's magnetized. And right now... Oh, you think there's just air in it? I don't know. some troubleshooting in the back so Adam and I are gonna make sure all the hoses are run correctly and make sure we're not pinching anything everything's out of the way and looking good seed with them and do planting with them would have. We do not have a diverter valve up here. And it's going back to the open center valve and the flow is not getting through correctly and I'm not going to be very good at explaining it but right now we have Jimmy rigged it through the winch by pulling the pin and running the winch right now to make it flow the way it needs to. Okay, clear as mud? Yeah, me neither. Now we are going to test because they will, I'm told they will pick up some flow from that fan. So it was actually picking up the little bit of fertilizer that was still left in the tubes on the actual rig itself that I didn't have enough air pressure to blow out before. So it's pushing fertilizer through, that's good. What are you clowns doing? Uh, yeah. Huh? Is your dad here? 
No. Nope. Oh, that's right. Are you recording? Yep. You want to be on the Millennial Farmer? Sure. That's one of the master pipe layer juniors right there. Yeah. There's the fertilizer I left in the tubes. Now they're clear. <laughs> These guys are just like Randy and myself. <laughs> Adam says we need an outro. Uh, yeah. Do right. you, you want me to do an outro? All right. Well, thanks for watching. Go on now, get. Go on. Did you guys think they were ever going to leave? It took them a while. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You got a game face? I gotta get my game face. <laughs> yeah. You gotta you gotta put your hand against the camera then to black it out.